Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We are talking with Vanderbilt political science professor Joshua Clinton. He is an expert on polls. And as we approach the midterms less than two weeks away, I think it's a great time to talk about polls. Fascinating. You were talking about poll sizes, you know, the number of people that you call, how many people is a good uh, sample size. New York Times called 23,000 people, had 500 people actually participate. Two million people in the one from the early days of polling. Yep. What is what? What? What are you comfortable with? You you talk to what number of people and you feel comfortable? Well, I mean, this is kind of where you know you know sci you know so the science kind of comes into play. So if you talk to a thousand people that are a random sample of the population, right? And that's uh, random is not you know it's like a really important word in that sentence. Then you can accurately estimate the population. But the problem is random right. right it's not random anymore like where are your list of people that you're randomly selecting from mm -hmm. like there's not phone books that we can easily take even voter file lists like you have addresses I don't know how you would do random people what what do you stop people on the street you ask a thousand people then they're all from Nashville or do you call people and it's all people who answer their phone yeah so you know, wh how do you how do you find random well so what they used to do right so when you do random digit dialing what they do is they literally make a random number generator for phone numbers right so they know what what exchanges actually work and they just kind of randomly generate phone numbers and you start calling and so you're calling lots and lots of numbers most of them don't even work right there's not even a person Person is associated with that, but if you call enough of them, right, and if everyone's equally likely to answer the phone, again, equally everyone's equally likely, then then you're okay. The mm -hmm. problem, though, right, is that that's not true, right, and especially with polling being politicized in lots of ways, that's not true. And so, like, and I think that this is like a lot of the polling is also being done by the networks themselves, and given where our national discourse is, that can also prevent you know, create a problem. And so, for example, if I'm a Republican and I get a phone call from New York Times or CNN and they want my opinion, <laughs> am I going to tell them what my opinion is? Right? Maybe not. Or if I'm no, a Democrat no. and Fox News is saying, what do you think about, like... Right. And so I think there's, like, this increasingly resistance to kind of giving... You know your your opinion uh, into what, which is also complicates you know matters. I think that would complicate it enormously. Absolutely. And so what you need is um, you need to know the demographics of the state. You need to know the demographic. I guess the demographics of the voters. You yep. need to identify who's going to vote. Um, you know, 50 percent are over a certain age, and 50 percent are of this ethnicity and all of that, right? Yeah, you absolutely. need the demographics to work. If you want if you want to be accurate, yes. <laughs> and so if you had three hundred people but you had perfect demographics, could you have a good poll? Mm -hmm. Wow. So just three hundred people. If it's the right right yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it's the right 300 people, right? So if it's a random sample, right, those 300 people, I mean, your margin of error is going to be like plus or minus five points, right, for, okay. th for 300. Right. So there's, you know, there's some error that's kind of built in naturally to that. But it still would, you know, you'd, on average, you'd get the answer right, even with 300 people in an election of, like, millions of people, which is, like, crazy. It's kind of, like, mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing, but that's kind of how it works. I mean, I'm, I'm, stu I'm, I'm fascinated by that. But, okay, so you see a poll. It comes out. What do you look for? you look for is it the margin of error or what are some of the things that that a, I mean a normal person could look for yeah. I mean, we're not gonna pour over you know books of data but a poll comes out what is it you look for to see if this is credible or not credible well I mean there's there's a couple so one thing is like do they report what the response rate is right so that's like so the American Association of Public Opinion Research has tried to take a leadership role to give some guidelines about what you ought to report and so the margin of error is basically of, 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 if there's a hundred percent of actual people what percent of them answer the phone and so if you're not telling me that information then I don't know uh, and now why is that important so not many people answer the phone. Two percent answer the phone. Why? Why is that important to know? Well, you worry when you don't have a lot of people answering the phone that yes, I'm doing statistical adjustments on the back end, but maybe there's something really weird, right, about the two percent who choose to answer the phone, right? So even though my sample looks like this, you know, I made it look like the state in terms of education demographics, there's still something odd about someone who's, you know who's right. answering the phone versus someone who looks similar to them but is not answering the poll. And that's like, that's not knowable, right? And that's, right. that's the issue. And so it doesn't really tell you like for certain that there's a problem, but like the more that you actually talk, are able to talk to people, then you become less, you know, concerned about that. 
The, is that something that's out there generally, the response rate? No, it's not. I mean, so this is the problem. Is like the things that I look like, whenever I see a poll, like I immediately say, well, that's probably not right. And so then I, <laughs> I, I, dive, you know, I dive immediately in to try to say, well, do you give me the, actually the questionnaire? And if, to, so, to, so I can see, like, what questions are you asking? Because, I mean, the reality is, like, if you want an answer, like, and I'm a pollster, I can get you that answer. Like, you know, I, you know if, if you're any good, right, you can do that. And because how you ask the question matters, when you ask the question matters, how you decide to weight the data, I mean, all those things can push it around in dramatic different ways. And, you know, and I've seen that all. And, and you know, so for example, you're asking about, you know, Affordable Care, care Act, or do you ask about Obamacare? You'll get right. different answers. Do you ask about illegal immigrants, or do you talk, talk about undocumented workers, right? Do you, you know? Right. So all these, you know, if you're pulling on a Senate race, do I ask about tr President Trump's approval before I ask how you're going to vote or after, right? So the fact that I ask it first, now all of a sudden you're thinking immediately about President Trump, and what do I think about President Trump? And that, that's going to have spillover effects on how I answer the rest of the questions. And so, and, but that, context isn't really in any headlines. So you say, so-and-so's up by three points. And like, well, I have no idea like what question you ask, you know. Do you give someone the, the chance to say, don't know? So pollsters really don't like to do that because, you know, you want to have an answer. But the problem is like, you know, especially when you talk about complex policy, you know, so we did some polling in the Vanderbilt poll about like charter schools, which is you know, a really, really complicated issue. Right. And so if you get people to say, well, I don't have enough information, 50% of the people say, I don't have enough information, which is probably accurate. But you force them to make an answer and they'll tell you something, right? Because you're having a conversation, but how reliable that is, you know, who knows, right? So there's all these different ways that you can go really, really, you know, off the tracks with a poll. And so one thing that I do is I always look at to kind of look at what percentage of Democrats and Republicans, right, are answering the poll. And because for better or for worse in our politics these days, if you tell me your partisanship, like I can I can pretty much nail how you're going to vote, right? Because <laughs> Democrats vote with, you know, Democrats 90% of the time, Republicans right. vote for Republicans. And so and that no, if that number fluctuates, that's going to explain the whole polls. And so, you know, when I teach this class at, at, at Vanderbilt on elections, so you'd always have these debate polls during the presidential election. There's all these insta polls about who won the debate. Yeah, that's right. And, there is. Yeah. And you you look into those things, and like I always I always just kind of pull them up on the on the on the screen to talk about them and say like, this is why you don't trust these kind of polls because you look after those debates and like the percentage of Democrats who are answering the polls was like wildly out of whack. Okay. Why? Because they watch the debate and if I'm a Democrat, like I want to tell someone how great Secretary Clinton did. And whereas if you're a Republican <laughs> and you're like, well, that wasn't so great for the president, like maybe I'm not going to answer my phone call. And so <laughs> like the enthusiasm that someone has about talking about your candidate and revealing your, your opinion can really change. And so the composition of who that is is changing. But that's but that raises the issue, like, so then do you adjust your polls, right? This is a raging debate in polling world. Like, do you try to wait based on partisanship? Right. Um, or not? Because if you wait on partisanship, given how, how much partisans vote for their candidates, you're basically picking the answer of your poll, right? I mean, in a state like Tennessee, if you waited for partisanship, I don't see how any Democrat would have much of a chance, right? I mean, because we're a pretty red state right now. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, President Trump won by 26, you know, it's... 26, 26 points, and he's mm -hmm. wildly, you know, he's wildly popular, right? His approvals, you know, 55%, 60%, so like it's really popular, right, in, in the state. And so depending on who you're, you're, you're talking to, right, that, that's going to be hugely consequential. Fascinating. All right, we're going to take another break. Um, uh, then we'll, we'll talk more about this election. You know, what can we glean from the, um, the high turnout that we're seeing in early voting? We'll take a break. Be back right after this.